Well, welcome to the show, and thanks so much for joining us. Will Smith continues to make headlines and hear what Denzel Washington and Bishop T.D. Jakes have to say about it. Plus, Mark Wahlberg opens up about his faith that fuels him on and off the screen. Here's Ephraim Graham with this week's top five stories from Studio 5. At number five, Grammy goes to Old Church Basement. Elevation Worship and Maverick City Music. Maverick City Music and Elevation Worship take home the prize for Best Contemporary Christian Album. I will never forget that little basement where this beautifully wild season between our two uh, artists, our two groups began. And God we believe, God we believe for it. CC Winans. 23 Dove Awards, 15 Stellar Awards, 12 Grammy Awards. Make that 15 Grammys. The Grammy goes to Never Lost, CC Winans. With this year's Best Gospel Performance, Best Contemporary Christian Music Performance, and Best Gospel Album. Wow, you know, I've, I've been doing this a long time, but it's, it's still wild. Wow. Kind of overwhelming. Um, I just think that um, it's, it's the faithfulness of God. At number four. But I got to ask you right now, Pastor Washington, you came in as a senior statesman into that situation. Don't let me tell you about it. You tell me what happened, what happened, what happened. Denzel Washington talks about the Oscars, Will Smith, and what happens now while speaking at Bishop T.D. Jakes' Leadership Summit. There's a saying, when the devil ignores you, then you know you're doing something wrong. Conversely, when the devil comes at you, maybe it's because you're trying to do something right. And for whatever reason, the devil got a hold of me. I don't want to say what, what we talked about, but um, who are we to, to, to condemn? You know, I, I, I don't know all the ins and outs of this situation, but uh, I know the only solution was prayer, the way I saw it. At number three. This is with the passage. Safely, Lord God, please make an example. I tried to break shackles, now they ankles and shambles. Grammy award-winning musician Chance the Rapper returns to the music scene with a new single called Child of God. A rich man, the size of the needle that the camel fits. Walking to Jesus with my sandals wet. This release includes an art collaboration and an unveiling at the Museum of Contemporary Art. At number two. In these turbulent times, more than 200 million listeners have turned to a Minnesota man for a sense of calm and peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Father Mike Schmidt's pandemic project is now an international phenomenon. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. His Bible in a Year podcast has climbed to number one with some 240 million streams and counting. It's two guys from Minnesota reading the Bible and it rose to number one. Who could have thunk it? We were shocked. Are you surprised so many people are so interested in hearing the Bible every day of the year? So that doesn't surprise me. What surprised me was that it was the one that I did <laughs> that was um, helpful or successful in this particular way. At number one. I know, yeah, I've been so blessed and so fortunate. It's not to forget about where I came from. It's to utilize those talents and gifts for God's greater use and purpose. And so when it hit me, I was like, you know what? This is what I got to do. Mm. And what better than to find a way to utilize uh, my best talents and attributes and what I do best in my primary business and to find a story that would bring people closer to God or to faith or to each other. Actor Mark Wahlberg sharing what's motivating him and his work these days. I can't help but to recognize the physical transformation that we watch you go through. I mean, I want to say you packed on 30 pounds for this role. How difficult was that? And why did you think that was important? Ha, it was miserable. And it was important because, and this is very important. I, I get it. I've done it a bunch of times. Actors talking about their physical transformations for the part. 
Stu transformed so much physically and spiritually. You know, everything about him was predicated on his physical prowess until he came down with this rare disease. And then as his body started to deteriorate, his spirituality soared. Welcome back to the show. It's Good great to, be to have you Thank with you. us. Thank in, you. in between your battles with 14-year-olds. <laughs> yes, you got it. <laughs> All right, Mark Wahlberg has recently opened up about his walk with God. What can you tell us about it? I love it. Um, he's saying that he, as we're hearing this more and more, Denzel Washington first comes to mind, but we're hearing this from actors who've had success. Mm -hmm. When they spend time thinking about the success, they realize, okay, I don't have this success for me. I really have it so that I can use it to glorify God. Uh, and the latest role that he is doing, he's playing a priest, and he's also a Catholic. He's playing a plea, priest, and I, I, the way he got the role, the whole idea was in conversation with his priest. He was going for counseling, and he said at first, he's like, are you pitching me a movie idea? <laughs> and he goes, I, I don't think I would need to take advice from you. But the more he heard about it, the more he wanted to play this role of Father oh. Stu. This man endured great pains and the way he arrived at becoming a priest, miraculous. Uh, and Mark Warburg does an amazing job uh, oh. playing the role too. Well, just a production note, we need to get you a better camera so that you can match. <laughs> yes. oh, what a beautiful shot he had. Oh, fabulous. They do a great job. Great job. All right, let's go back to the Oscars. Mm -hmm. I'm kind of getting sick of going back to Me the too. Oscars. Me too. Me <laughs> too. Yeah, I kind of wish it would all just go away. Same. But it's still reverberating. So um, what can we get from Denzel Washington? He, he opened up a little bit mm -hmm. about what was going on. Yeah, he wouldn't give details about the conversation, but um, I like what he said, and this is what I have been saying. Who are we to condemn? Um, Will Smith has apologized. Chris Rock did not press charges. Chris Rock has said he wants to move on. He's still processing it. Uh, Will Smith said, I will take whatever punishment the Academy wishes to hand out. Um, so we're there. Um, but we all are in need of forgiveness. No one is their worst mistake. And I know it's hard to see. I'm tired of watching it. Uh, I'm just hoping we can get in conversation about the need for forgiveness and grace. No one likes what happened, but there's a desperate need in our country for forgiveness and grace. We want to cancel anyone who does anything that we think is wrong, even if it is wrong. Well, this is kind of a big thing. Yeah, it is a big thing. I mean, this is more than just right. words, right. I, I, more than just my opinion. Absolutely. Uh, he struck somebody on live TV. 100% wrong. He has committed to Two, I've got to do work on myself. I need to return to therapy. I obviously have not dealt with the issues um, the way I thought I had. Uh, and if you read his book, you talk. He talks about a lot of childhood trauma that yeah, he, he held his father. for. Yeah, attack his mom. Uh, yeah, and he carried that with him into adulthood. And he felt blamed powerless. himself, like yeah. I didn't protect you. Mm -hmm. I didn't protect you. And he allows some of that conversation to play out in the autobiography where his mom is going, oh my, you were carrying this around. That actually drove some of his success. I wanted to get enough money, enough wealth to take care of my mom, to take care of any woman connected to me. Mm -hmm. I wanted to protect them. He also talks about moments where he failed his daughter. He didn't protect her the way he should have. So there's a lot that he blames himself for. Uh, and when he's running to the aid, he thinks to protect his wife. I think we're seeing some of that play out. Well, uh, I said the day after, there had to be a whole train load of problems that went into that Absolutely. act. Uh, that, that is showing a much deeper problem. I think he's going to pay a huge price in terms of his career. He's already had uh, a, a biography movie mm -hmm. canceled. Yeah. Um, what other impact do you see going forward? Will his producers, directors want him on set. His agents, um, his agent C, uh, CAA, one of the largest agencies in Hollywood, represents some of the best. Um, initially, we're going to drop him. They've reconsidered, at least for now. Uh, so that's still uh, on the table. Uh, I believe some streaming platforms have removed some of his movies. I'm pretty sure Netflix has taken some of them off, and naturally, there's revenue there that he's lost uh, as well. Uh, and I think people are going to be cautious, at least for now, um, going in, working with him, and attaching him to their projects for fear that um, they'll face backlash for working with him. Okay.
Let's go to something positive. Yes. Father Mike, <laughs> the Bible in a year. Uh, it's absolutely amazing that it's just gone, gone to the top. I tell you. Uh, <laughs> yeah, my, he's got a wonderful voice. He does. He does. But uh, are, it's, it's, are people that hungry for the Bible? I, I believe so. Uh, there, was, there was one uh, gentleman who uh, uh, he was interviewed. He's a, a Catholic, Roman Catholic as well. And he goes, I'm ashamed to admit this, uh, but I'm a practicing Catholic and I've never read the Bible. Oh, wow. And I was like, wow. And he goes, there's just something about his voice mm -hmm. uh, and the way that he's reading the Bible. He's working with someone who's helping him to sort of read it chronologically. Uh, and then there's a bit of conversation between him uh, and this Bible scholar on so the podcast. So it's more than just yes, read than, through. Yeah, it's... And, and it's 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 digestible sizes. Mm -hmm. You're not going to be there in any more than 20 minutes. So it's like, you give me 20 minutes a day, I'll get you through the Bible in a year. Yeah, that's pretty good. That's a good promise. <laughs> yes, that's yes. a good promise. I like it. <laughs> and if you want to get the through the entertainment world in a, in a year, all you have to do is watch <laughs> Efron's weekly show. It's called Studio 5. You can watch it on the CBN News Channel or online at cbnnews.com slash Studio 5. Well, Curtis got the opportunity of a lifetime. The problem, it came with a high cost, one that his family couldn't afford. So how did he manage to pull it off? Take a look. U.S. Airman Curtis knew from an early age he wanted to enlist in the military. I come from a military family. I have a lot of relatives who served. It was just the clear path that I was going to follow. Curtis's military career path changed significantly when he was screened to become an officer and accepted into the Air Force Officer Training Academy. His wife, Chelsea, was thrilled. It makes me very proud to be able to support him, and it's just really exciting for us. Curtis would be gone for two months, then report directly to his new duty station in California, leaving Chelsea to drive the 1,500-mile journey alone with the baby to meet Curtis. They decided to fly Chelsea and the baby and pay someone to drive their car out to California. The plan was expensive, but worth it. However, their finances took another hit when their car broke down halfway across the country and had to be towed to California. It was definitely hard, all these costs coming at once. We didn't have the funds and savings, so no, we it just not. went on the credit card. We probably spent ten to $12,000 in a couple day period moving the house, getting the broken car halfway across the country. It was completely unplanned. Curtis and Chelsea relied on their faith that God would sustain them. My faith in the Lord is everything for both of us, I think, at the end of the night to be able to bow our heads and talk to God. And it just, it's helped us get through so many difficult times. The couple's new church home, Arbor Christian Fellowship, heard about their situation and asked helping the home front to assist. Pastor Dan Daniels told them CBN was reimbursing them the cost of Chelsea's flight and towing the car across country. And CBN would pay to fix the car too. How do you feel about that? That's amazing. That's pretty, yeah, wow, okay. <laughs> I'm just feeling so grateful right now. This is amazing. Thank you so much, CBN, for uh, this gift. <laughs> this is, this is life-changing for us. At their new duty station, they celebrated the arrival of their second daughter. They're now focusing on family rather than worrying about finances. We really appreciate it. It's absolutely gonna change our family's life. And I think in the future, if someone was considering donating through CBN to this program, they are going to change the lives of military members. Helping the home front, that's what we call this wonderful program where we and you and I help military families, active duty military families, and recognize that if a spouse, if a parent is in active duty military service, well, the whole family is serving too. And we want to be there to support them, to let them know that we love them, we care for them. If you want to be a part of it, all you have to do is join the 700 Club. Call us, 1-800-700-7000. Say, yes, I want to join. How much is it? It's $20 a month. That's 65 cents a day. And you're joining with tens of thousands of people that want to make a difference in the world today. If that's you, reach out and call 1-800-700-7000. And if you want to designate your gift to military families, it's real simple. All you have to do is go to CBN.com and go to the giving page. There's a place there where you can designate your gift to Helping the Home Front. You can also write to us at CBN Center, Virginia Beach, Virginia, 23463. Just put Helping the Home Front in the memo line. 
Uh, or you can just call, too, and say, I want to give to Helping the Home Front, 1-800-700-7000. Natasha Grants was only 15 years old when the newspaper reported her boyfriend had been murdered. There was a crucial detail the newspaper left out. She was carrying his baby. Natasha desperately needed someone to help, and she wound up finding a warrior. Natasha Grants always wanted to belong, the child of a biracial affair between two married people. Natasha was put up for adoption at seven months old. It was difficult being adopted and trying to channel all the emotions that I felt. My biological mother did not want to take care of me. I think I was a reminder of her affair, and she struggled with that, as well as my race. My white friends would tell me I acted too black, and my black friends would tell me I acted too white. So it was really difficult trying to find my identity. Natasha's identity issues and insecurities made her lash out at those around her. I did have a lot of anger issues and a lot of emotional problems, I guess you could say, that I did take out on my adoptive mother, I think, so she got the brunt of it for the most part. Natasha still craved approval, so she started having sex when she was just 12 years old. I didn't understand my body. I didn't understand you know, how to value it and what it meant and who I was. I started at a very young age, and I was very promiscuous from that point forward. Every guy I would date, I automatically had it in my mind that I had to do these things in order to stay with him. She drifted from relationship to relationship, looking for fulfillment. I really felt that I didn't have any purpose. I wasn't sure of what goals to even set if I did have any. And I just kind of felt lost and alone, and I wasn't sure what I was on this earth for. Then she got pregnant at 15 by her 19-year-old boyfriend. I felt completely numb being pregnant in 15. I was just numb to it. And as the pregnancy progressed, I did feel like being a mother would become my identity, and I would finally find myself in that. But halfway through her pregnancy, her baby's father was shot and killed. Natasha was lost again and slipped into a deep depression. Suddenly, everything was stripped away. My world was turned upside down, and I realized that I wasn't in control of anything because I think I believed the illusion that everything was in my control and that no matter what came at me, everything was going to be okay. Her adoptive mother helped Natasha through the depression of losing her baby's father, and the two became close. After her son was born, Natasha tried to make motherhood her purpose. She returned to finish high school and then started community college but she still felt incomplete. Even though I felt like I was coming into my identity as a mother, I was still empty inside. I still felt like I was missing something greater, something bigger, and um, I couldn't figure it out, doing what I was supposed to do, but I was still like a zombie. There was no life inside of me. I didn't have life. I just went along with what I thought I was supposed to do, and I was trying to be the kind of mother I thought I was supposed to be. During her second year of college, Natasha noticed something different about one of her professors. There was something about him that was intriguing me, and just the way he conducted himself. It was the little things, and I've never been around anybody like that. One day, at the end of the semester, she asked him about it. And his reply was, I'm a warrior of Jesus Christ. He never mentioned Jesus' name in class, never said anything like that, but the presence was so strong that I could still feel it, and I still knew. They talked for a while, and the professor invited her to church. I've never been to church besides for Christmas and Easter, you know, not even every Christmas and Easter. I have always felt drawn to the spiritual world, but I would look to fill that void in things like a Ouija board or hanging out with my friends in a cemetery. I just had that hunger for something deeper. At church, Natasha felt God's love, and she knew she found what was missing from her life. There was something, a chord that was struck in me where I knew that this stuff was real, and something in me just lit up and went crazy. When I got home from church, I prayed. I went to my bedroom, closed the door, and prayed on my knees and said, Jesus, please come into my heart. And instantly, it was like a light bulb came on. That's what it felt like. I'm finally home, and God just became my father, and there was this beautiful connection that was so deep, it was indescribable. I saw myself as having an identity in Him now. It wasn't just up to me and who I saw in the mirror. It was about so much more. He looked at me and he saw a beautiful daughter of his that could change the world with his help, you know, as he worked through me. 
and I saw myself of great value. You know, I wasn't just this little biracial girl that was swayed to and from, adopted and unwanted. I became this powerful woman and um, he just overtook my heart and everything. The first thing she did was buy a Bible. She would read it constantly. I just was completely soaking up all the truth I could. I just loved that thing, and I didn't even understand it, but I knew I was meant to be reading it. Today, she is happily married to a pastor, and they are planning a church outside of Pittsburgh. She identifies as a child of God, unconditionally loved and forgiven. Looking back on my life, I see him everywhere. His fingerprints were everywhere the whole time, which really helps me wrap my mind around his love too. That even though I felt alone, even though there's been times where I had suicidal thoughts, all those different things, he was there. Every moment of it, he was there. To sit here and see the big picture of what he's done since the moment I was adopted up until now, and the people he's brought in and out of my life and everything, it's just, I don't know. You just really wrap your mind around how good he is and how much you really don't deserve any of it. You can't wrap your mind around it. The Apostle Paul talked about the manifold wisdom of God, and it's a wonderful way to look at it. It's like looking at, at drapes. When you pull back the drape and you look at each one of the folds in it, you can see his plan, his purpose working all things, working together for your good. All you have to do is love him and be called according to his purpose. For Natasha, you know, according to the world's way of looking, uh, should she even exist? Uh, should that even have ever happened? Here she is. She was conceived in an affair. She was conceived in sin. But God worked through that, and he had a great destiny for her. He had a plan and a purpose that he had mapped out before he even laid the foundation of the world. When you look at that, you're just dumbfounded with the greatness of his power, what he is able to do, how he's even able to make our mistakes shine for his glory. He can do the impossible. He can do all things. You can do all things through him. Now, how do you get it? How do you get what Natasha has? She went to a church and she experienced worship and she says, it ignited a fire in me. And that night I went home and I prayed, Jesus, come into my heart. Something I can't describe what happened is, is how she, I can't, I don't have words for the transformation that took place in my life. You can have that same experience. I can't explain it to you, but I can just invite you to say, taste of the Lord and see that he is good. See what you were created for. Experience him. He will come into your heart. He will come into your life. He will reveal the manifold wisdom and the plan and purpose he has for you. What he did for Natasha, he will do for you. It starts the same way she started. You bow your head. You pray that prayer with all of your heart. Jesus, come into my heart. That's it. That's all you have to do. If you don't even believe in him, you can add that to it. Jesus, if you're real, if this can really happen, can you show me? Can you show up for me? Now, here's his promise. When you seek me with all of your heart, that's when you'll find me. If you want help with this prayer, if you want help with seeking him, all you have to do is pick up the phone and call us. 1-800-700-7000. Just say, I want to meet Jesus, and I want to meet him today. Here's a word from Philippians. He who began a good work in you will carry it on to completion until the day of Christ Jesus. Hello, I'm Gordon Robertson. Thanks for watching the video. Be sure to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell for more encouraging videos like this one. Welcome to the 700 Club Interactive Family, and God bless you.